Shalom, shalom to everybody as we open this up. <clears throat> um, as we open up with a prayer, we just humble our hearts and our minds, Abba God, and off the conversation we were just having. We we just thank you, Abba God, for sustaining us, for giving us clarity of what's going on around us, um, for not allowing us to be nobody fool, and for um, showing us the correct way to go forward with all things, no matter what the world is doing. Um, we pray that your will be done, Abba Yah, in politics or whatever else in this world. And no matter how it goes, uh, we just pray that you strengthen our faith in you to um, lean on you in, 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 in all things. Uh, there may be some trying times ahead. Uh, and if not for us, for people around us who have not maybe full, uh, given themselves over to you in, in, in the manner that we have. Um, but through it all, we're going to praise your name. We're going to continue to give you thanks for everything you do, for health, for understanding, for family, for friends, for allowing your word to speak it to us in a certain kind of way. Um, whether it's Ebony or Obadiah or anybody else going through anything, Father, we just we just we just give you glory and knowing that no matter what uh, uh, is prescribed or what is thought to be needed, you will always have the final say. You will open and close all doors. You will guide all procedures, Abba Yah. We humbly come before your throne and ask that. Um, we pray that you guide the conversation tonight to be fruitful and to inspire and to encourage any of us and anything that we may lack or strengthen us in something that where we may uh, we where we may be strong. Um, give us more strength. Um, and anybody who may hear, Abba Yah, just let let your word speak. Um, as we try to uh, facilitate a reading or as we try to, you know, make it make sense if, 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 if that be possible. Uh, but we just ask that your Ruach HaKodesh be over the conversation. And at the end of the day, that will be the ultimate um, definer on the sense that is made here tonight, if any. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I brought this up because last week when we ended, <clears throat> it was the letter from Abgar. And remember, this wasn't part of the Gospels. And Abgar was a king. It said, um, what did it say here? We're going to break it up. He wrote a letter to Hamashiach saying, you don't have to be crucified. The Jews are plotting on you or, you know, the Israelites are plotting. You can come here. I'll protect you, which is funny because the Romans was protecting him. This is how he has. He's kind of in a hairy position, but in another part of, you know, probably more than likely somewhere going back towards Turkey. And I kept telling y'all I had a precept for this because I had looked into him before. The first time I ever read this, but it wasn't a precept. I had actually did like a history thing on him. And I I knew it, man. I said, too, once I pray about it, y'all was going to make it. He was going to bring it back to remembrance. And he did. And just briefly, we see Abgar is, they call him a Christian king. We know he ain't a Christian king. Ain't no Christianity at this. That's so funny how they do that. They just throw out the first Christian king. Ain't even no Christianity. <laughs> Said he was converted to the faith by Thaddeus of Edessa, one of the 70 disciples. And Thaddeus is one of the disciples that is, it spoke to him in this letter, in this book. Um, but as you see, Abner is, um, was I in here? Ab, 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 uh, talks about him writing this letter. Um, I know it speaks about his wife. Letters of Abigail. What does it speak about his wife? Though? Because she is the key to this. Uh, corresponds that the one I just have his life. Oh, I'm not up far enough. <laughs> not far. He was described the king of the Arabs by Tactus. Tactus is a Roman historian. He has a, he wrote a he has a kind of like a Josephus from the same era era. He wrote a book called The Annals of Tacticus um, something um, or Cornelius Tacticus. I actually read some of this before. It's kind of like it's written in the same time at the book of Josephus. It's a historical account. 
I ain't read the Abgur in there, but I remember reading about it because he he said something about a Mashiach in there. I remember doing some read in it too, too, because I was speaking to somebody who was kind of playing it like the Messiah, Hamashiach was this fictional character. And I remember at, at the time I knew something that Tacticus wrote in this in this history book from Rome speaking to the Messiah, but it says that he, he wrote about Abgur as well. Um there's something else about Abgar. Abgar's chief wife was Queen Helena of Adabin, or at Adia Bini, who, were, according to Josephus, was the wife of King Manobaz or whatnot. And this is the book of Josephus. And I, um, because I had brought this up in the book of Josephus. And like I say, this isn't, this isn't, um, a validation of anything. I really don't know where I stand with the book of Josephus, but I say that respectfully because I know a lot of people lean to it. Um, I haven't ever completely read the book of Josephus either. You know, <laughs> let me say that. But, you know, I don't know where, where any of these things lie. It's just all kind of like reference for me. But I don't know where. I don't know. Did I highlight it? Did I highlight it? I did not. I have found the part in the book of Josephus where it speaks about her and Abgar, and he does detail them to be like, you know, folks giving authority through Rome. He talks about how Abgar's wife first believed to believe, but started to believe in the Messiah, and like she brought that to Abgar. Um, and they, you know, in, the, in there, it kind of swings it like they started to believe in Judaism, which we understand at this time, they just started to believe in Torah. Wherever they were coming from, they started to believe in the ways of the Israelites and, you know, the feasts and, you know, what Torah says, the commandments, more than likely they believed in Moses and King David, which even in their own history, they probably was some type of speak to them. But I don't even have this all prepared like I wanted to. But if you all wanted to look more into Abgar, there is sections in the book of Josephus about him um, and his wife. And I don't know, oh, you know, matter of fact, uh, I read some of this. It was, it was kind of interesting, but that was the precept I had was about Abgur's um, or what I had about Abgur. Um, but this letter not like I say I'm not validating this letter that it says that he wrote to Hamashiach because that I cannot um, but but he is a real he was a real king and his wife at least Josephus says, if you believe Josephus, that's why I say I'm not trying to give Josephus no whole bunch of validation either. If you believe in the, the historical account of Josephus, where Josephus also spoke about Hamashiach, he said that a, a evil rumor spoke up about Yahusha, um, and he quoted it with saying, if he can be a man named Yahusha, and then he said, if he can be considered to be a man, which speaks to even Josephus had heard about the things he did and and and, um, you know, to us, there is none. But to these folks, it was debate at this time in Rome. Did this Israelite really do all that? <laughs> Did he really, you know, Pilate, we, we see the historical counts of the letters that Pilate wrote. They got them in the British Museum that he wrote back to Caesar at the time saying, you know, it's this man down here, man. He did a lot. Now, I ain't saying, you know, it's funny when you read his letter. I think part of his letter is in this book. I ain't saying he used Caesar. <laughs> But I am saying he's something different. It's kind of funny when you read Pilate's letter, seeing him tiptoe around being blasphemous to Caesar, right? But I don't want to spend too much time looking for it because I don't even know how to find the search now, which is ridiculous. Um, is that not her name? Is her name? Paulina. Uh, is that it?
I always rack my brain when I get to look at the summer. I can't find it. Ah, maybe this is it. Is this where he speaks to? No, no, here. Chapter two, how Helena, the queen of Adiah Bani and her son Isitus embraced the Jewish as it is here religion. Mind you, we are also understanding that being in the time of Josephus just being Torah. Um, and Josephus maybe even saying a belief in Hamashiach and how Helena supplied the poor with corn. And that's what it says. Like she was down in Jerusalem. You know, like I say, they're kind of like Herod type figures in the Roman Empire at this time where I don't know if they're Romans, you know, but they have been given a certain authority over a certain uh, 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 part of land and in, 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 in what is the Roman Empire, which is, quote unquote, the Middle East. So it could be anywhere in range of all of that if we're looking at it in that manner, right? Um, you know, that just made me have another idea about something else to think of the Roman Empire. Are we saying that, uh, depending on where we place Jerusalem, if we say that Jerusalem is in South Africa, so are we saying that the Romans had once conquered South Africa? Uh, I don't know why my mind just went there, but that would have to be part of my question when if I was looking into that. But uh, This woman is like her and Abgar. I'm just trying to say like these were real folks that have been written about in history. Now, did Abgar really write a letter to Hamashiach? And we, when we read this last week, we also seen that um, Hamashiach was like... Uh, Basically told Abgar, like, you know, I'm here to do my father's bid. You can't save me. You can't even save yourself. You know, that's cool that you offered that. It speaks to some faith, but now I got to do what I got to do. So I just wanted to say, I just wanted to put that there because I know this story kind of sticks out. It's not nothing that you see in the Gospels, but these were some real folks. Now, did he really write that letter to Habashiach, I guess would be. The point of debate if it was about that um it ain't about that for me it is what it is we just read this but he believed and, and like i say even josephus speaks to his wife believed that she was known to help the poor down in jerusalem and do all these other things and so on and so forth but starting today we have made it to the passover which means we almost at the end of this but we didn't came a long way from his childhood mayor this book starts with Mary's childhood and Mary's upbringing. We made it to the Pesach, the preparations, and I believe this to be his final one that he lived um, as a man. And as we start here, excuse me, the Passover preparations. Then came the day of unleavened bread. upon which the custom is that the Pesach lamb must be sacrificed. The disciples drew near to Hamashiach and he said, clearly I have not looked forward to eating this Pesach meat with you in its every aspect, have I? And he sent out two of his disciples, Kepha and Yehachanan, saying, go and ready the Pesach meal for us. So he sent out two disciples saying, go and ready this Pesach meal for us that we may eat. And they asked him, where would you have us make it for you? Go to a certain man in town and behold, even as you are entering the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters. Then you will say to the one in charge of the house that he goes into. The master says to you, Adonai, maybe even Mashiach, my time is at hand. My disciples and I will keep the Pesach at your house. Where is the room where my followers and I will eat the Pesach meal? Then he will show you a large upper room, which, he, which has been spread out and prepared. Arranged it for us in that place. So the disciples went into the city and found things, even as he had described it to them. So they readied the Pesach there. That evening, Yahushua arrived with the twelve, and when the time had come, he sat at he sat at table with the twelve apostles. Then he explained, "I have longed to eat this Pesach with you before my suffering, and as much as I say to you that I will in no way eat of it until the time comes when it is fulfilled in Elohim's kingdom." 
and a dispute broke out among them as to which of them would be the greatest. At that point, he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it, lord it over them, and the ones who are over these are called benefactors. Yet that is not how it will be with you. Let the one who is greater among you be even as the lesser, and the one who rules is the one who serves. For which is the greater, the one seated or the one serving? Is it not the one who sits? Even so, I am here with you as one who serves. You are the ones who have stayed with me through my ordeals, and I am passing a kingdom on to you, even as the Father has passed a kingdom on to me, that you might eat and drink at my table in the kingdom. Then you will sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Yasharal. And I believe it says that in Revelation, if I'm not mistaken, that the 12 apostles will um, play a role in the end of this. Something I found interesting here is, um, something I find interesting here is um, the house that they go into and they tell the man that, you know, I'm assuming that this person is somebody who believes in the Messiah, have heard the stories about him, as everybody in Jerusalem has heard the stories about him in the surrounding area. Um, and as soon as they told them who they was, which he may have already knew the disciples, um, he already had a spot laid out for him. And I, it just speaks to the preciseness of the prophecies and the things that the Most High has said that he has used his word to do, um, like everything. And I guess let that be encouragement for us and, and just knowing as we go forward that uh, everything is already prepared. We just have to remain righteous and do what we have to do um, to make it to that point. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm gonna open the door. How you doing? <laughs> Moving on. If anybody got anything to add, just you could jump in at any time. Now, now Yahushua knew prior to the Pesach feast that the time had come for him to lead his world and return to the Father. And out of love for his own who were in the world. He proved to them the extent thereof. At the time that the supper was being served, the devil had already placed in Yehuda Iscariot, the son of Simon, or Shimon, Shimi, Sh Shimeon, I believe, the resolve to betray him. Yahushua was aware that the father had placed all things into his hands and that he had come from Elohim and was on his way back to He was on his way back to him. So he rose up from the dinner table, laid down his outer garment, took a towel and wrapped it around himself. And, you know, I once heard a fool try to say, see, he took his garments off. He was naked in front of the disciples. No, he wasn't. He had clothes on. He took off his clothes. He took off what he was wearing. He took off his garments that was clean. <laughs> he was not naked. And he did it too, as we finna see. He poured water into the basin and started washing off and wiping dry the feet of the apostles using the towel with which he had guarded himself. And this speaks to what he was just saying about the, the, the greatest of you is also just a servant in the kingdom of Yah because only the one city, which is Abba Yah, is beyond, um, I feel like lack of a better word, what we are and what we are to be. We're all servants of Yah's, no matter what, how great your position is in this. Like DeAndre and the Cote Cat. Yeah, hey, hey, how you doing, brother? No way. Um, I had a question. Um, not, if I'm not mistaken, did you, did you just say the the twelve apostles will rule in the kingdom over the twelve tribes? I know you came. Y'all probably know where it's at. Um. If you can, you came, y'all. Yeah, it's a scripture I know that speaks to, in the judgment, I believe the 12 apostles sitting on 12 thrones and judging Israel, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, that is the scripture. I got to find it in, um, um, I think it's in, I think it's in Revelation. So, you know, um, just like Yahushua said, it wasn't for him to determine it, but then they are, they are rural and they are also going to be the 12 foundations of the holy city too. Yes, yes, yes. So, so gonna be, there are going to be 12 foundations of the holy city. So that's not the Jerusalem that we're going to be in in a thousand year reign. That's the one coming down from the, from heaven. So, yeah. Oh. But, uh, but so, you, DeAndre, what, 
like you, you were saying you wanted to find that scripture for the 12. No, I, was, I, was, I was just, I was wondering just as, um, are the 12 apostles, uh, are each one of them representing of one of the 12 tribes? You know what I'm saying? That I, I don't often, know. I often wondered that, but you know, um, you know, I often wondered that I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I couldn't, I could never, I, I think that they, I don't think that they all come from, you know, all of the 12, all of the 12 tribes, you know, I mean, a couple of them are brothers. So if they brothers, they couldn't, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't come from this, you know, all of the 12 tribes. If you, you know, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So I think the sons of uh, Zebedee's sons, they, that would knock out them. Then they, they can spiritually represent everybody, but that would knock them out with the sons of the sons of thunder. They had two brothers. True. Right. And Simon no. and Andrew, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, ain't Kepha's brother Andrew. Don't get me to don't get me to postulate. I, I gotta look up. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's yeah. some old brothers though. To mm -hmm. your point though, Og DeAndre, to your point, I also I agree with him. I can't say they come from um all 12 tribes, but I also know that they ain't all Yehuda either i believe that's kind of what you're asking are they all from the tribe of judah right right i, yeah. don't, I don't think okay. that as well okay i appreciate that yes but still in all the place that they've played with Hamashiach, yeah they're gonna oversee a, a, something to do with um the revelation the end times and the foundation of the city you know um as we know that the 12 tribes names are over the gate. So Judah has a gate, and, but the apostles, uh, and I guess that would be a good study to further look into why the apostles will be the foundation of a city. Maybe because they go on to spread the good news or, or, or most of them kind of gave their lives for, uh, uh, to make sure that the word of Hamashiach makes it worldwide, which we see now in hindsight, the importance as we've been reading through Acts on Shabbat, the importance of what they were going around doing because their work then, as we read through Acts in my mind, I always think the work we're seeing them do then is the reason why we have Torah now. So maybe that's why they would be the foundations because the work they did um, 2,000 years ago, quote unquote, we believe in that. The work that the apostles was doing um, is so prevalent and important to the way the world has been, the word has been spread around the world today. But that's a good question that you said. Anything else? No, 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 I'm good. Thank you. I Hallelujah. Shalom, Makoti Amy. Shalom, Makoti Chalois. How y'all doing? Shalom, shalom. 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 Hey. Shalom. Good to see you. Good to see you both. Tell DJ I said Shalom. Where are you at? <laughs> shalom. I right, would do. I'm right here. There you go. Shalom. <laughs> you get your phone yet? Uh, I get it tomorrow. I got to hit you up. Yeah, I'm going to get it. I'm going to grab it tomorrow and set it all up. i shoot you the double. Make sure you, you still got mine? Uh, I email you. I can email you. I about to say it might be in my Google stuff. I but yeah, it, it matter of fact, you sent it to him before in the email, so it should be in there. But yeah, do it anyway. All right. So to this point about Hamashiach with his towel, I have heard now Messianics try to make a point to try to play him like this was like some type of homosexual thing going on here. And it was not. Where did it come from? Hold on, let me shut this door for you. will come up here kicking up dust, man. <laughs> oh. Dust. All right, my bad. So, as he was washing the disciples' feet, when he got to Simon Kepha, which we know to be Kepha, the rock which, of which the, the assembly will be built on, he asked him, Mashiach, are you going to wash my feet? Yahushua replied, you do not yet recognize what I'm doing to you, but it will come to you at a latter time. You will never wash my feet, Kepha insisted. Were I not to wash your feet, said Yahushua. 
you would have no portion with me. Master, Simon Kepha answered him, not my feet only, but my hands and my head as well. Yahshua replied, once a man has been cleansed, he needs only to have his feet washed. Otherwise, he is clean all over. And you know what's funny? Because we read this in Acts already. When he had to send him the vision with the garment coming down and all the animals, and he told him, whatever I clean is always clean. And then he sent them the Gentiles. They told him to go holler at the Gentiles. Kepha didn't want to go. In my, you know, and I'm sure, like, with everything with Hamashiach, everything with the Bible is layered. Um, and I don't know every layer. But I hear him tell it he's preparing him here for that. Without, once a man has been clean, he needs only to have his feet washed. And we know the feet is what God's direction. Um, the walk, a walk, uh, the word walk in Hebrew, as we know from Genesis 5, where it talks about Enoch walking with Yah. I don't know the exact word for walk, but I know it represents a lifestyle, a journey, not just a walk of the feet, right? It represents... Um, Enoch walked with Yah, and the exact word is halak. And it represents uh, to behave oneself. Once, if once, once a man is clean, all he needs is his feet washed. Feet washed. He needs to repent, make sure his behavior is in order, the way he follows, right? The way he goes forth, the way he grows in Torah. This is what he's telling Kepha. And it was in the, I know it's in the ancient, I had this highlighted somewhere, I'm sure. Yes, walk. To walk a journey or a lifestyle custom. Enoch walked with Yah. He was on a journey with Yah where he lived out his lifestyle and his customs according to how Yah said that it was supposed to go. Basically, he was in the character of the name of Yah, right? As we know, um, names represent character. So I hear him speaking about a multitude of things, but... Keep there's going to be some Gentiles going to come to you and you ain't going to want to go mess with them. And you're going to have a vision and everything. This is the beginning steps of once a man has been cleansed, he needs only to have his feet washed off. Otherwise, he is clean all over. He needs only to have his steps prepared. He, he needs only to always reevaluate the way he is walking this out, following the mark, focusing on the mark. How he, he only needs to, once he has been cleansed, and you are aware, you know, we have to, uh, just like it says, once you've been cleansed and you're aware, of, well, I, I can't think of the exact word. Once you are aware of the truth, there is no more remittance for sin. But you still need to repent every day, um, chastise yourself. The things that you're getting away from, the things that you're trying to get more comfortable with, more accustomed to doing in Torah, in, in righteousness, really. This is what he's saying, I believe, about this walk. And he's trying to tell Kifa. If somebody going to come to you, you're going to kind of have this same mentality and remember this, of which he didn't. And you are all clean. Well, not all of you. So he's telling Kifa, and I believe this conversation kind of happened off to the side. I don't know if everybody can hear this. You all clean, but not all y'all, Kifa. You see, he knew who was about to betray him, and that it, and that is why he said to them, oh, okay, they all hurt, because it says them. I'm assuming they all hurt. Not all of you are clean. So after he had washed their feet and put his clothes back on, he went and sat back down again. At that point, he said to them, have you any idea what I've done for you? You refer to me as the master and the teacher, Mashiach. And what you say is indeed the truth, for truly that is what I am. So if I, the master and the teacher, have washed off your feet, then you should wash each other's feet. This is, I know this is a key for the awakening as we claim to walk in the image of the Most High Yah, and we claim to be followers of Mashiach, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves where we can't wash each other's feet, right? Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves where we can't, um, um, once again, encourage each other or, or, you know, respectfully, you know, push each other to continue to do right, to be better as we push ourselves naturally. We ain't just pushing each other and we can't push ourselves we ain't just pushing each other and we can't be pushed, right? I have left you in an example that you may do even as I have done for you. I think that rings so true in today's what we call the awakening here in America today because it's become so, uh, you know, it, it, it's become very, um, um, 
I don't want to say high and mighty because I just, it's, I don't know if it's that bad, but it's it's that spirit, if that makes any sense. You came, y'all. Yeah, shalom. Um, Aki, shalom, everyone. Yeah. yeah um, you know, I was at an assembly, um, a path to Yahuwah. And I don't know if we did it around a feast day, but we washed each other's feet. And it's not, the, the you know, the humbling part, too, for some people is to allow someone to wash their feet. It doesn't seem like that. Sure. But, you know, it's like, man, you know, you know, it's, um, you know, everybody gets their feet washed and then everybody washes each other's feet or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's normally like uh, I'll wash your feet and then you wash my feet and then every, we, we all pair up. Everybody kind of pairs up. You know what I'm saying? And so but it's not like, you know. It's it's like you know you you doing it you want to show that you're humble but it also takes some humility for a brother that you respect and that you love that that person is washing your feet and it makes you reflect like you know what kind of life I've been living and I had this brother wash my feet I ain't done everything right mm -hmm. and so it's 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 a it'll bring a little bit of contrition to you because you know you're like I got to do better mm. it, it'll it'll make everybody in the room feel like man I got to do better I got to do better at serving you know the Most High. You know, and, you know, because nobody in that room, I don't think, had a problem with washing someone else's feet. But sometimes if you, you know, you know, that, you know, you got a, a big ock or you got somebody that's just, you know, that you really care about, that you that really always, you know, and in, they inspire you. They don't have to be the oldest person, the most knowledgeable person, but they just they just have a really good walk, you know, and, and they always can talk you down and they can always you know, when you talk to them, it's always something that you get from them. And then, you know, and then, you know, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't see myself like this person, you know, but this person is washing my feet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's until you do it, man. It was a beautiful, it was a beautiful night, man. It was a beautiful night. It's, it was, it was, you know, it's, it opens up a lot of, of who you are because it's, it's a, it's fun because people are, are laughing and you know you know what I'm saying it's it's, <laughs> it's you know it's it's easy Hebrews that this ain't just no regular group you know so true <laughs> you know so you know and um but yeah it's it's not it's not what you like the washer and the person's feet getting washed in the arm both being humble if you've got that type of heart both of y'all are getting humbled in that situation I can see that. Mm -hmm. And I've never, I've never, I've never been in one of them situations. But hearing you break that down, um, because like you say, it, 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 it'll, especially if it's somebody that you know like that, and you like, man, this I really got it together. I'll be seeing him do everything because only you know in your heart when you fall short at, and you open up to whoever as you do. You don't have to open up to anybody if you opening up to Yah and you working on you. That is more than enough, in my opinion. You know, so. You know what I'm saying? You may be looking at the person washing your feet. Like, I look at this Ock like he got it all together. And I know I'm still working on X, Y, Z. And well, I should never have him washing my feet. So I can see the person getting his feet washed being just as humbled as the one washing uh, somebody's feet. I think that's a really good point. And we see him, he's letting that, because this is really what he's letting them know. Y'all stay humble. And that's why I liken it to today's it, uh, The Walk, because um, in a mainstream view, not speaking to none personally, but in a mainstream view, um, you know, it's just not like that. You got certain heads of factions and, and, and different organizations or whatnot to where uh, it's almost kind of like Christian, where you can't even go ask such and such leader, whoever will, will nothing, even in this walk. So, and Amashak is letting it know, letting it be known that. It does not matter what position you get amongst Israel. You still need to be able to wash somebody's feet as well. You're not beyond that. And if I'm yeah. able to do it, then you mm -hmm. definitely need to be able to do it. So that, that was a really good point you just brought up. Ah. You know, I was also thinking about it, too. You know, I'm quite sure Abraham had a house full of servants and stuff. But if there was probably no one there to do it, you know, of course, you're going to give the people's ca uh, camels, you know, some clean provender and get them some water. If there was nobody there to do it, Abraham would have done all of that for any visitor. He would have done these things right here. This is what our father would have done. He would have done this stuff, and he wouldn't even thought about it. Like, like, um, 
he wouldn't have, he, it, it, it's not like, it's not about a statute, stat, a, stat, a status thing. He's like, no, I'm just going to do it because I want you to feel at home. You know, this is what I want you to feel. I want you to feel like you can, you, you know, you've been walking all day and you, your feet are sore and then, you know, and, you know, and, or whatever, and you get here, you, I'm going to fix you something to eat and I'm going to wash your feet and you're going to feel at home. You're going to be able to relax. Really and it's, uh, you know, and, and it's, 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 um, you know, um, it's it's like it's not it's not sim it's not so it's not so much as a symbology, but it's like you know, this is my heart. This is the way my heart is. The way I think about you. You you're valuable to the Most High. You are eternal. You know you're an eternal. You have an eternal spirit, and you know I care about your spirit, and I don't want to put a bad image out there for my Elohim that I'm like, nah, I ain't washing your feet. I get my servant to wash your feet or whatever, you know, I'd get somebody else to do it. But if ain't nobody else there, he'll do it. That's why I just feel about Abraham. And, and I feel like our righteous fathers. You know what? I never thought about this like this until y'all brought this up. But I'm going to tell you something, man. <laughs> just thinking about my feet. Man, my feet looking like dogs at work, bro. <laughs> but for me to let Ock touch me. Like this whole the whole the whole foot watching thing to, come I humble, got to be real humble. <laughs> yeah, know? it becomes real funny. You know, I'm telling you, everybody start laughing because black men got some crazy looking feet. Uh, yeah. yeah. So 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 yeah, it get real. <laughs> you know, it gets it, you know, and everybody understand, man. <laughs> and even even then, you think about back then, they walking around, most of the travel is done on foot, on donkey or whatever. You're in the field all day in sandals. Like, we got crazy feet. We wear sneakers and boots. You ain't even just out in the field like that for real. So, no, that that's a, that's a, um, all of them are really good points. Um, that was just me. Anything else? Anything else, man? that you may do even as I have done for you. That is a key statement because we once again, when you look at the awakening today, so much of this is, and I shouldn't even say the awakening, just religion or the doctrines of the world. Um, There's quite a few things done contrary to how Hamashi I give. I know, you know, we have, we it's a discourse about a certain group to where, you know, you got to pay for the lessons. And I, I heard that one of them has joked that all that you freely give, freely you receive, this ain't that. But that's what Amashiach said. He didn't charge anybody to hear the word. Um, now, he did tell us a workman is worth his pay, but that's what somebody offers and gives you. Like, we we don't put a price on, you know, speaking the truth. So in a multitude of ways, and that goes for, for the religious doctrine as well, in a multitude of ways, um, this spirit of we can't, you know, this is bishop such and such or deacon this or whatever, you know, we you can't ask him no question. That, no, Amashiach is with them like, y'all ask, ask me all the questions before I go. Y'all need to get all your questions out now. You know what I mean? He's the exact opposite in such, I would say little ways, but they ain't little ways, but it is telltale of, are we doing this right or not? Truly, truly, do I say to you that a servant is not above his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. See, if I know I ain't greater than y'all and I can humble myself, then y'all can humble yourself. Because you're not greater than me, but I've always received you as a brother. Yes, I teach. Yes, I'm the Messiah. But as he says in the book of Hebrews, it behooved him to come to the in the world in the form of his brothers, not his subordinates, not these people that Yah has put me over, which I am the king, right? But it said it behooved him to come in the form of his brethren. He looks at us as brothers, right? If you have understood these truths, you would do well to put them to use. I, I think that's just so, I think that's just so profound considering where this thing is going. And I, I almost don't even really know how to articulate it but I know that you all follow the awakening enough to understand what I'm saying. Like, this is not how this goes and not even just the awakening. Cause it ain't just that even like, you know, religion, you know, where Israel has fallen, this is not how this goes. Um, you think about just even in the worldly sense, our people now, the ones with the money who always become leaders cause they got money, but ain't got a lick of sense for real. Right. They ain't washing on our feet. We ain't got enough money. What, 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 
They like wash water. They people feet. I ain't washing none of them peasants' feet. They ain't got no money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They ain't want no Grammys. They ain't want no Oscars. Don't none of that mean nothing. If you have understood, and that's true humility, not just getting up saying, you know, I want to thank God and I'm truly humble. You know, that's humble. In the world we live in now, just because you get up and give a speech and say, I'm just, I'm humble, we'll say, oh, he's so humble. Did you hear him? No, true, true humility is, I want to see Oprah wash one of the occultes' feet. And not because we on camera or nothing, because we somewhere and and we and you buy her house and she say, you know what, girl, I see you walking by. Come here, let me wash your feet and give you something to eat. That's humility when ain't nobody watching. Anybody can turn it on for the camera. And if you have understood these truths, you would do well to put them to use. I am not referring to you all, to all of you. You know, the funny thing about our celebrities, they wouldn't wash any of our feet. Yet, if she was still alive and any of these black celebrities right now in America, if she was still, I won't say all because all of them wouldn't. I don't know if Kanye would. I don't know if Denzel would. But <laughs> the majority, I don't know if Kyrie would. But the majority of them. If she was still alive right now and they flew to England, and I believe in England, you couldn't touch the queen, which is why I was so it was so stood out so much, I believe, when she met the Obamas and Michelle Obama, an Israelite, hugged her. And I remember they made a big difference of her. Like, you ain't supposed to touch the queen. Michelle don't know. She's from the south side of Chicago. She hugged her. <laughs> That's what we do. Any of these Negroes right now who would not wash none of our feet, if she was still alive and they went to England and they said to come in the castle, you got to wash the queen's feet. 99% of them would go right in there and wash her feet, though. But they would never wash their brother's feet. And I, I think this, 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 what he's saying right here stands out in so many ways. I am not referring to you all. I know the ones whom I have chosen, but it is, it is to satisfy the scripture that reads, the one eating my bread has raised his heel against me. I am speaking to you from this age so that when it comes about, you will believe that I am. I'm letting y'all know how it's going to go. Remember, too, as we get to Acts and we look in hindsight, the disciples with him, they rocking, but they ain't all the way sure yet how real this is. Like they see him do the miracles. They believe he the son of Yah, the prophet, you know, but even in their faith, because we know Peter's about to go deny him. Other things are going to happen. And when you get to the Acts, you see he has risen. He's been with them teaching. Now the disciples is like, we ain't going. We don't care what nobody say. Do what you going to do. We are not going. So he understands that at this moment, some of y'all still need to see me die and be raised from the dead and do all this finna happen to for you to truly believe that I am. Most assuredly, I say to you, it, which is okay, I, and you know. Y'all understands that even with everything that we're doing, it's still another level of faith. And it, it that's okay. But be aspiring for that level, though. Let's not just rest on we made it this far. Always remember that we can go farther. Most assuredly, I say to you, anyone who receives the one that, that I send to them is receiving me. And the one who receives me is also receiving the one who sent me. Remember this when you all go out and when you're talking to your family or whoever about to them. Anybody who receives you, and my wife says this to me a lot of times because I'll be bouncing things off her like, I don't really know what's this and that on. <laughs> and she says this to me ironically a lot. It ain't about us. It ain't about me. Ain't nobody feeling or not feeling me because if I was still the old me, everybody felt me. No, it's, it's, it's the one who has sent us all. Remember that as you go off and even if it's the most random conversation, Anybody who receives you is receiving a Mashiach. And that's a big deal. It's not about us. Anybody who rejects you, they're not rejecting you because you, you know, unless you still out here wilding, <laughs> right? But they not today, they're not rejecting you based off of any of that. They're rejecting what you're trying to tell them about the truth. They're rejecting the truth in the way. They're rejecting the covenant. They're rejecting you know, things pertaining to that. They're not per se rejecting you. And we see that in the acts with the disciples. They didn't, the, the, the disciples didn't have no enemies because they was just this or that. Their enemies was because of the one who sent them. Hallelujah.
Anyone who receives me is also receiving the one who sent me. Remember that. You know, keep that in mind as we, as these conversations, because these conversations is happening in the most random places. I just was telling Daniel, I was in the phone store and the conversation came up with the young lady who was helping me to upgrade my phone. Anyone who receives any of you receives any of us. Uh, he's receiving the one who sent you. And remember that, take that serious. Hey, uh, I want to go back to that one verse right before your purple highlight. Where it says, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. Hallelujah. Too often I find myself getting into conversations where people say things like, uh, JC is, is God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. This statement here doesn't say <laughs> the one who is sent is equal to the one that sent him. It doesn't say that. <laughs> it just doesn't say that. And like, it's clear all through the text. <laughs> I, you know, that's, that just stuck out for me. Because, you know, like, there's a lot of folks that, that get caught up in that trinity. No, true. And you know what, though, to your point, though, nor is the one who sent greater. Remember that as anyone who received you is receiving the one who sent you. But remember, you aren't greater than the one who sent you. But the one is who sent you is telling you he's not greater than the one who sent him. So all of it, just the washing of the feet, everything he's speaking to right now is speaking to. When I leave here, y'all about the way walking through shadows is going to be healing people. Paul, we just seen you look at homie Bar Jesus and just by looking at him and rebuking him, y'all made him blind for a season. Y'all gonna have a great amount of power. As I told you, greater works than these you'll do. Make sure you stay humble. Make sure you stay a man about the people, even some women that's around, or uh, as we hear them talk about women that have been around. Make sure you stay humble. Make sure you stay accessible in righteousness, though. Make sure you stay, you know, don't, 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 don't. Actually, he, he really telling them, don't become religious, man. Don't get to walk around like the goats, right? The goat, when he eat, eat, the goat, the sheep, when he eat, he eat with his head bowed down low, eating. The goat, when he eat, he eat with his head, with his head held high. Don't, 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 don't be like that. Stay humble with this. As Yah has given us Torah, right? We understand it on the level most people around don't. You know that people around you are wrong. I was in a conversation the other day, almost uh, a lot of with somebody, um, Matter of fact, I've been in multiple conversations recently where when it came to the biblical portions of the conversation, the people who are around me are religious folks and they've been wrong. And I've just been letting them be wrong and I've been correcting subtly and only where it's needed. Like I can't correct every little thing. <laughs> you know, let's not get too high and mighty with this authority that God has given us, even if that authority is just a better understanding of Torah. Remember that we aren't greater than the one who sent us. I believe this whole part right here is just about staying humble. Staying humble. Amy said Oprah didn't even introduce herself to them as kids. For those of you who don't know, when Amy was a child, she was on Oprah's show. Um, she ain't even introduce herself to y'all, Amy. She ain't come holla at y'all. Man, that was so intimidating and scary. We just got up there. She's conducting business and this, that, and the other. And I respect it now as an adult understanding business. But as a kid, that was scary and intimidating. But Mary D did. She made sure she came before the show started, before the recording. She showed us around all of WGN News, made sure that we felt comfortable as kids going on the platform, and then started the recording and all that. But yeah, Oprah wasn't, she wasn't going. She was on business. <laughs> See, that's interesting because you would think, uh, would adults understand, but you would think as I, as you say that with children, you know, you would go above and beyond to make children be cool. And that would, that's the dream is to come here um, and meet you. And that does kind of speak to this as well. Um, because I know for yourself, though, when you do the events that you do, um, I know that you make sure to go holler at all the kids. And the reason why I know, because there's always too many kids around here shouting you out. So that just goes to show you the difference in the posture of what the work is. And that's his spirit. I'm always, I'm always about the kids, sorry. Oh, hallelujah. And his spirit wrenched as he spoke these things. 
But look, he said, as they were lying there and eating, the hand of my betrayer is on the table with mine. <laughs> and y'all see y'all selves in there. We all sitting there. We eat. He like the head of the betrayer is on the table of mine. We like, hey, yo, who, who, who still got the hand on the table? Oh, man, I am telling you the truth. One of you eating here with me is going to betray me. His followers were saddened and started looking to one another, uncertain as to which of the disciples he had met. You know, there was only 12 disciples and one of them betrayed him. I think that's like a key to, excuse me, I can't tell you why that's key, but I think that's key. Then they begin to deliberate among themselves as to which of them it might be who intended to do this. And one after another, they started asking him, Mashiach, is it me? No, you can't let Israelites debate about that or deliberate about that. How that conversation go? Y'all know y'all people. I always say this. How that conversation go? We all live there. Man, Aki was acting kind of funny in there with that, with them roles, man. What you all with? You know, when we was coming down here, Aki, you, you didn't seem sure of yourself. You kind of was acting a little weird. Your mama kind of be acting funny now, too. What you up? <laughs> y'all know how that went? Man, your kids used to speak. Oh, man, my shorty told me they saw your shorty in the in the market recently. Your kids don't even speak to my kids no more. You good? Y'all know how that deliberation went. Oh, it was all kind of questions. Like, no, I got, you know, I used to stop by the crib. You don't even stop by the crib no more. Was, and you like, I got just be trying to get to the crib. I've been getting off work late, wife been tripping. <laughs> But that guy, you know, that's how our people be. It'd be little stuff like that, especially in the confusion. This is why we got to communicate, too. Because in the confusion, it'd be little stuff like that. And that you wonder, like, man, I wonder if dude acting funny. That's how that deliberation went. Like, you been acting a little strange. Judas, you been holding that bag mighty tight, Ock. Huh? That ain't your money, man. What's going on with you? And at the end of all of that, they, they had to question themselves, like, is it me? Think about that. If, you, if it ain't you, you know it ain't you. But you had to question yourself to him. Is it me? Now, one of his disciples, the one whom Yahushua loved, was leaning against his breast. Simon Kepha motioned to this disciple, seeking an answer as to which of them he was referring to. He therefore leaned against the breast of Yahushua and asked, Who is it, Mash Who is it Mashiach? And Yahushua replied, It is truly one of the twelve. It's one of y'all. Don't worry about who it is. Just make sure it ain't you. It's one of y'all. Don't know that. <laughs> the one who dips his hand in the bowl with mine. They all dip in their hand in the same bowls they eat. The one to whom I will give this piece of bread after I have drenched it. For truly, the son of man is to go precisely as it has been written about him. In accordance with what has been prescribed for him. Even so, woe, he tied that man by whom the son of man will be betrayed. Woe to him. It would have been better for him had he never been born. This is coming from the person who know where your soul come from, who know how you got to where you were going to be born. And he's saying it would have been better to you not to be born. I think that's interesting. So he dipped the bread and gave it to Yehuda Iscariot, the son of, of, of Shema. Then Yehuda. His betrayer said to him, surely it is not me, is it? Is it master? Is it Adonai? Yahushua replied, you have said it yourself. You know it's you. You know it's you. Ain't that something we say? Man, Ak, why you do woo-woo? Ak, you said yourself if we go woo. <laughs> you know it's you. Then, after the sop, Hasatan entered into Yehuda, Iscariot. So Yahushua said to him, do as you've resolved without delay. Mind you, I didn't make you do this. You've, you've already made this decision. Don't get it twisted. This is already in your heart because these people talk about paying you and you are already money hungry, which you showed us with the girl when she was anointing me with the oil. You said, why we ain't selling this to the poor? Scripture said he was saying that knowing he wanted to keep that money. So, and I, you know, I'm just guesstimating this. You know, these this is just my opinion, but. It's already in your heart, you money hungry, and they're going to offer you some money, and you already done displayed that you will be a little thirsty for some change. You already done did that, which is something our people do. Y'all, some of y'all know some folks who be a little thirsty around some money, so you may freely do certain things around other people that you can't just do around them. 
That's just how I go. But none of the ones lying there had any idea as to why he had spoken this to him. They in there eating and celebrating the Pesach, thinking in their own mind, is it me? They ain't even really catch all that went on is what I take right there. Some imagine that because Yehuda was in charge of the money bag that Yahushua has said to him, buy the things we will need for the feast or that he should give something to the poor. So he went out after receiving the bread and it was night because it's Pesach and Pesach starts at sundown, right? So they're in there keeping Pesach, but we know the Israelites are going to keep Pesach the next night. And this is why I go to 70 AD for this equation I have of 2024 being our 400th year. Because, and this is just a thought, but Hamashiach know the day that Pesach was supposed to be kept on and y'all doesn't change. I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I believe that Israel's timing was already off at this time. And at this time, it was only a day. Now, we off months. Some people keeping Pesach beginning of March. Some of us keeping it towards the end of April. Some people keeping it April 1st. Like, we all over the place. But Hamashiach would have known the exact day that Pesach was supposed to be kept on. Israel is about to keep it the day before, the next night, because we see it's night. They're keeping Pesach. And they're about to come get him in the morning. And then they're going to say he has to come down before the sun goes down tomorrow. Because tomorrow is Pesach. So that's something that's always kind of stood out there with me as well. Where Pesach falls. Akobadaya, you want to do some read, knock? <clears throat> uh, give me a second. No problem. Mouthful. <laughs> Man, I done, caught, I, done, I done caught you sopping your bread, huh? Would anybody else like to pick up some readings till he ready? Mm. Uh, where do I start it? Uh, so after uh, Judas? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so after Judas had left that place, Yeshua said, Now the Son of Man is prepared for glorification. And through him will Elohim be glorified. Yeah. And if Elohim is set to be glorified through the Son of Man, then Elohim himself will glorify him. And how suddenly will he do so? Dearest children, I will only be with you a little while longer. And even as I have said to the, uh, was it his, um, Israelis? Uh, mm -hmm. So now do I say to you, you will go looking for me, but not be able to follow me to where I go. I am passing a new commandment on to you that you should love one another even as I have loved you. It ain't just, you about, the Torah. It ain't just about the Torah. It ain't just to understand y'all keeping feast, you honoring your mother, you doing that. Y'all need to learn how to love one another. Keep going. Never think of yourself as truly fulfilled until you you can look upon your brother with love. Mm. It is among the greatest of sins to sadden the spirit of a brother. If you should uh, show love for one another, then everyone will recognize you as my disciples. I think about the awakening today. How much love do we see shown between the camps and different congregations or whatnot? How much love do you see? How many times in this awakening and and, you know, we're not going to name names, but you all kind of have an idea who is the mainstream Israelites of this awakening here in America. How many times have you seen a panel of them together 
even in disagreement, showing love, but still trying to get on one accord for the betterment of our people. I'm going to answer y'all how many times I've seen that. And I've now been in this awakening for about seven years, six years strong, seven and a possible. Never. 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 You know why? Because this awakening, there's a lot of tithing and all that going on. People signing things over, people moving into communities and giving their old check, their SSI and everything. And the reason why them people can't do that is because it's too much money that got involved and don't nobody ever want to be in a situation where it looked like they've been overshadowed or shined on. So now such and such is doing this with them and giving ties to such and such and this, this and that. And that's just one reason why it ain't like that. Never. Even out of the camps. Most of the elders out of these camps, these mainstream ones I'm talking about that, 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 that are the most visible, all come from the same school and have kind of came up in this awakening together. How many times have you seen the so-called elders and leaders of these camps sit down with each other? Never. You know why? Because it ain't no real love for your brother in this. And Amashiach said, when y'all able to show that real love is the only way somebody will ever look at you and recognize you as my disciple, which explains why the awakening, even though it's spoke about in a more broad way now, even though it's more visible than it's ever been, even though that conversation is being sparked up more than ever, I believe that also plays into why the growth of it is still really kind of stagnant, even though it's like that. Because there's not enough love. But us in our own small, much, much smaller way, we can be that example just amongst whoever y'all puts us in front of. But never, there has never been a meeting of, okay, the elders of this and the elder of this group or this congregation, the elder of this committee, right? The elder of this um, um, coalition, never, <laughs> never, never, ever, none of them. None of them. And that goes against what Hamashiach is telling us. And that love that we show for one another being a way that people can recognize that we are the disciples of him. Keep going, Obadiah. Simon Peter asked him, uh, uh, Lord, where are you going? Yeshua answered, you cannot follow me where uh, there just yet, but eventually you will. Then uh, Yeshua uh, revealed to them, all of you go stumble tonight on my account, for it is written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheepfold will, will scatter. But after I have been risen up, uh, raised up, I will travel on ahead of you to Galilee. But look, y'all going to know it's me. They're going to strike me down, and when I get up, I'm going to go to Galilee now. Pay attention. Keep going. Master. Master asked Peter, why can't I just follow you now? Simon, Simon. Satan had requested that all of you be delivered up so that he might uh, sift you as wheat. Satan had already came to the father just like Job. Soon as they take your son, them folks finna break bad. They ain't really following him. Keep those, going. Those who wish to see me and take hold of my kingdom must receive me in sufferings and trials and I, let me correct myself because satan didn't i don't believe he knew he was the messiah but as soon as i take this prophet this this one this one unit anointed a little bit who is righteous you just sent amongst them they gonna fall off my fault keep going but i have uh interceded on your behalf that your fate might be might might fail you not and after your conversion strengthen your brethren and Peter replied, saying, Master, I am ready to go to prison with you, and even to my death. Hold on, Kiefer, you know you pump faking, man. You're not ready for that. Now, after you see me, 
after you see me go into this into the tomb and come out, then you're going to be ready for that. And we see that on you in the acts. But at this moment, Ark, don't just be talking like that, Ark. You're not ready for that. Keep going. Even if everyone else should fall away on your account, I never will. And I will lay down my life for you. Then Yahshua uh, said, will you re really lay down your life for me? For I am telling you truly, Peter, this very day before the, cr the cock crows twice, you will disown me three times, denying even this very night that you know me. But Peter spoke the more vividly, even if it means that I must die, I will by no means deny you. And all of the others, uh, other uh, disciples uh, spoke likewise to him. And he asked them, when I sent you out without bag or wallet or sandals, were you ever in want of anything? Not a thing, they said. But now, he continued, let whoever has a bag or a wallet take it with them and let one of uh, who has no sword sell his robe and purchase one. Because if you're going to be moving with the faith that I know that y'all got now, and let that be a note to us too. If you're going to be moving with this faith that I know you got now to where you're going to be, you're going to be so quick to deny me. Although you saying you not, I know you is. If that's, if that's what you're going to be going for, then you need to sell your robe and get a sword. You need to sell your car and go get a Draco <laughs> or a chopper. You know why? Because the only person who's going to make it through what's going on in this world now is the one at the end of the day who got faith. And at least if you're not going to stand on your faith, Kifa, which I know you're not about to, then you at least better go get a pistol and a beat and try to blow something down before you just go because you're going to die. The only one who's going to endure to the end is the one who's going to stand on his faith through it all. Now, I ain't saying don't be, you know, don't do whatever it is that you can. But the only one, you're not going to shoot your way up out of here, period. It, for one, it's impossible. For two, it'll be Negroes who kill you before anybody else, even with that mentality. If you're not going to show no real faith and you're going to be so quick to deny me, then you need to go sell your sword. You need to go sell your robe and get a sword because you finna have to fight and you're going to lose the fight. But at least you'll be prepared for the fight that you about to have to fight. Keep going. I'm telling you that what has been written and he had, and he was uh, counted among the lawless ones must be completed in me. You see, everything that pertains to me is about to be fulfilled. Then they said, look, there are two swords right here. And he said to them, these will suffice. Get you one. You're going to need it. See, I know that even though y'all with me, you ain't exactly where you need to be at. But that's why I have already, as you said, the devil wants to... The devil is already telling him, I mean, uh, yeah, as soon as I take this chosen one, this, this prophet that you got amongst them and they acting all righteous, they going to fall. As soon as I do it, they going to fall. But I have already interceded on your behalf that he keep you because I know that the faith in this room already, it is not where it need to be. But hallelujah to him interceding on our behalf because when we start to read the book of Acts, after these events, oh, the faith is on a thousand. It's where it need to be. <laughs> ain't no more. Ain't no more. We don't need nothing. They put us in jail. Angel, come free me. By the time these folk, the Pharisees wake up, I'm back in the temple preaching the word. But if we don't get to that faith to completely be able to lean on y'all and all things, 
then at least be smart enough to try to make it, man, where you got you can stand at least a little bit of the chance, although you can't stand the chance without that faith. But at least you can try. So go get a sword. And matter of fact, these right here, they sharp. You better get you one of them. Kifa, I know. You talking about you'll lay down your life for me. Kifa, you better get a sword. <laughs> you ain't trying to. You ain't, you ain't, you not there yet. You gonna get there though, Keith. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, uh, Reed Nobody. That's enough. I think we gonna cut it right there. We actually had 8 30. The bread in the cup. Anything anybody wanna add, take away? Any questions, any comments, anything before we close out with prayer? You know, I, I was uh, listening to, he says, um, after your conversion. So just like you said, you know, there was the doubting Thomas and, you know, Thomas doubted him and everything like that, you know, Didymus. And, um, so after your conversion, so he knows that they're still in the process of being converted. Yeah. So it's just a process, you know, that you got to go through, you know, and um, I know uh, when they saw him, you know, after he had been crucified and resurrected and, and he came back to earth, I know that that renewed, that was a refreshing of their spirit. You know, they're like, yeah, man, this is it. So, you know, they, they were armed at that point to just go forward to like, you know what? He's the first resurrected. He's the first to be resurrected of the dead. And so he's already showed us. He showed us a mini resurrection with Lazarus. Then he showed us a resurrection in his life. And then he's showing us like this immersion is about me being buried and then resurrected into the newness of life. So that's why yeah. that's why you see these apostles really being able to preach it to the point where you start seeing thousands of people getting immersed. They yeah. just they were able to see that thing and to be able to convey it because it didn't matter if somebody they talked to somebody after they seen the resurrection of Yahusha. It didn't matter if somebody didn't believe in him no more. It you know, it, it, you know, once you see and is believing, you know what I'm saying? You know, and um you know, and 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 Israelites already knew that, you know, their forefathers heard Yahuwah's voice at Mount Sinai or Shavuot, but they didn't hear it. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So Israelites been going down through the annals of time from that point, the ones that weren't at Sinai, because the ones that were in Sinai, all of them dropped dead. There might have been some children that was dead as to heard the voice of the Most High, you know, um, you know, uh, at coming off that mountain, that mountain shaking and it turned dark and smoke, it's all in smoke. Man, that's crazy. But you know, now the father showed you just from a resurrection of life, this is what you gonna get. This is what you get, this is the reward. I have victory over death. So I just think it's, um, the conversion is, I mean, and, and a lot of us have, you know, we're in it, we know we're not going back to Christianity. Now we, we know we're not gonna go back to Christianity, but are we going to go forward in the way, the truth, and the life, though? Mm. Are we going to keep going forward hard in that? As if we heard, we saw the mountain on the smoke. As if we were at the Sea of Galilee and Yahushua standing on the coast and they cooking fish and, and he and they, he's talking to them. And then they say, oh, man, this is Adonai. He he back. You know, we that, that has to be something that, that has to be something that you... You know, that's got to be something that you got to you got to feel that you got to experience that in this walk. You got to experience that. You got to when you read that you spiritually, the father can take you there and make it true in your life. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, he will take you there and you will like, yes. And you will feel just like you'll feel ebullient and happy just as they enjoy it, just as they did when they saw him come back. You supposed to have that same experience right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After your conversion, strengthen your brethren, and we know that Kepha did. And we know that he's going to take this really hard when he deny him, too, as we as just looking forward, as most of you have, I'm sure, read the story. After Kepha denies him, he takes this really hard. It could have threw him off from the wall. But he remembered, I, been see, I interceded on your behalf that your faith might not fail you not. Yeah, you better struggle a little bit after this. You're going to be crying and looking like, dang, I really did that. But stay faithful. And after all of this, you need to be the one to go strengthen your brethren. And once again, we know from reading the book of Acts, Kepha took that personal. 
<laughs> Kifa took that to the heart after this. Like, you know what? I ain't messing with you, Pharisees. Do whatever you got to do. I'm coming right back up here and speaking the name. So to your point, Aki, we all going through this conversion. We, it's a process, as my mother would say. We all going through this process and being strengthened in this. Um, and let's just stay faithful to the end like Kifa. Anything else anybody want to add to this? To the conversation. And I, Daniel put the precept for the, the question DeAndre asked with the apostles uh, being in the judgment from Matthew chapter 19. I think he said verse 28 in the chat. If there is nothing else, um, one of you brothers pray us out. Uh, you came, y'all. You can pray us out if you're free, y'all. Shalom, Mark. Okay. I kind of wanted somebody else to pray, but I'm going to go ahead and pray. Yeah, I uh, dare you. Uh, 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 I might. Anybody. Me and DJ, one of y'all could pray. Ag DeAndre, if you like to, what are you ask yeah. us out? What are you ask pray us out, man? I know I get the runner from the mic now, man. Come on, man. Y'all some mighty men, man. With y'all words, we gonna move mountains. <laughs> Hallelujah. There you go. You hold it down, huh? There you go. Hallelujah. Oh. Abby, we thank you. First and foremost, we thank you for waking us up this morning, Father. And we thank you for allowing us to always come together and fellowship in your word, Father. We thank you for the shalom that you have placed on each and every one of us, Father. And we thank you for the good and the bad tidings. For we know there's lessons in each and every one of them. We thank you for allowing us to see your son walk and be able to learn from the lessons that he spoke as well, Father. So we thank you for the proper guidance. Like Amashiach told the 12, I never sent you out, you know what I'm saying, without the proper tools. So we thank you for giving us the proper tools. As always, and we also thank you, Father, for allowing us to come to you whenever we need be and for always being there for us. But we know there is no greater counselor than you, Father. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your laws and your word, Father. We thank you for everything that you have given us. And in the name of your son, Yahshua Hamashiach, Father, we give you thanks, honor, praise, glory, and all esteem, Father. We say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Beautiful prayer, brother. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Praises to the most high, y'all. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody have a great evening. DJ, I'm going to make sure I email you tonight, if not in the morning. Nah, that's the bet. I'll be looking for Hallelujah. Thanks for the read, Nobadaya Shalom. Hallelujah. Everybody have a great evening. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Shalom. Mm-hmm.